I suppose you have some games. Hey guys, welcome back to Classic G-Body Garage. All right, well, I'm still wrenching on the 78 Cal A T-Top. This is the video following up to the uh, compression check that was supposed to happen on this car. And after I started digging into things and I basically just hooked up the battery and turned the key and nothing happened. And that's because I found some major, major wiring issues going on with this car. So I went ahead, figured all that out, fixed it. Check out the video. I'll post it, the link in this video, so you can check that one out. But uh, among all the other things that I found in regards to the wiring, I found out that the bell housing bolts were all loose on this thing. Someone had put a transmission in it, and I went ahead and tightened those up. Uh, I had to pull the distributor cap off to get to them, so I cleaned up all the terminals in there. I got the battery all hooked up with the proper side post battery cables back to GM original and I am just about to turn the key to fire this car up it's been sitting for seven months uh, six or seven months either way it's been quite a while I put some gas down the uh, the vent of the float bowl Moby is hanging out in the driveway watching traffic go by and let's see if this car fires up like I said, it's been sitting for seven months. Let me move this stuff out of the way. Like I said, I had some wiring issues. This car is an absolute mess. Just putting it back together. Let's see if it cranks. Come on. Is it running terrible? Come on, Chevy. I know you got gas in you. It is running like shit. Running like shit. But it's running. Like I said, I still want to do the compression check on it to figure out why this thing's running on seven cylinders or less. It might need a carb rebuild. The buzzer won't stop because the steering column is jacked up. Someone pulled this column apart and didn't put it together right. Well, it's running. We'll figure out why it's running bad here in a minute. All right, well, it's running a little bit better. It's at least idling. I don't, believe, I don't believe it's a carb issue, but you can hear the distributor clicking. I don't know if that'll show up on camera, but you can hear the distributor clicking in there, so that means something's arcing inside of the distributor. The 403 did that, and I had another car that did that, and I went ahead and changed out the distributor cap, and it fixed it. So either way, I'm going to do a compression check on it. I'll show you guys how to do that. And I'll test all these spark plug wires and figure out why this car is running on seven cylinders. All right, well, I have the car pulled up here in the driveway. I took it up and down the street just to make sure everything worked okay. Transmission shifts just fine. And it's still missing, of course. It never cleared itself out. So it doesn't sound like the distributor is really clicking anymore. So what I've kind of uh, uh, narrowed it down to at least or... I shouldn't say narrowed it down. I at least want to do a compression check on it. I did throw another another set of spark plug wires on it just to try to narrow it down that way. The spark plug wires did check out on the uh, the meter. They do seem to be in good shape. I did not switch out the distributor cap. I did blow all the uh, shit out from underneath the distributor cap, sanded the terminals. There was a bunch of uh, just dirt laying in the bottom of the distributor itself. So that didn't seem to uh, to uh, fix anything. So. Still missing, so what I'm going to do now is a compression check. And this is uh, just a typical uh, compression gauge. You can buy it at any auto parts store. It has a, a coupler on it, attaches a hose attaches to it, and it has two different size threads that you could thread into the spark plug hole uh, once I pull the spark plugs out. So what I'm going to do is pull the spark plug wires off of it, pull all the plugs out, unplug the distributor, uh, so I don't shock myself for whatever reason and then 
as I crank it over, you guys will see the compression uh, gauge go up. Usually we'll hit up around uh, 140 to 160 is usually about average. In each one of the cylinders, you wanna make sure they're within, I don't know, 20% of each other, I don't know what it is, but within 10 pounds, I guess, of each other is what I should say. So I'm gonna go ahead and take care of that. I'll show you guys what I got going on here in a minute. All right, I have the compression tester threaded into cylinder number five. Gauge is at zero. Let's turn over the key and see what happens. There you go, you just turn the key until the gauge stops moving, and it looks like cylinder number five has, if that focuses in, 175 PSI. So that one is good. All right, while well, I'm working my way around each cylinder, I have it on cylinder number two. Have the uh, gauge set at zero. Let's crank it over, and I believe I found my problem, guys. Let's see if I can reach in here and film it at the same time. The glare on it so you guys won't be able to see it all right let me show you guys what I got here gauge is at 60 that is 60 psi for sonar number two which is way too low for it to even fire so that's pretty disappointing I was hoping for a bad spark plug spark plug wire Distributor cap, but it looks like cylinder number two is whooped. So, uh, you know, like I told you guys before, these 305s are known to wipe out camshafts. And when, what that means is the lobes on the camshaft are oblong. And over time, they, uh, they get rounded off. So that means the, uh, the valves don't open and close the way they should. And... That is the end result. Low compression. Either that or the, uh, the valves are not seating on the, uh, the head itself. So I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this car. I either start digging into this motor, find a good running 350. If I'm going to do a motor swap, I'd rather put a 350 in it, but I honestly don't want to don't wanna do that. The 305 that came out of the... Uh, the 84 here has been sitting in the bed here for two years. I don't think it got water in it, but honestly, I don't know. I don't know what to do. I really don't want to dig into a motor swap in this car. I have other projects going on. I basically bought this car just to get get going and, and resell it for a profit. But hey, if someone wants to make me a nice offer on this car, I guess I'm accepting all offers right now. So. If you guys want more details about this car, I'll go ahead and take offers, give you guys more details. Uh, otherwise, I guess I'll be figuring out what I need to do with this car. So, in the meantime, leave comments, subscribe, and until the next classic G-Body Garage video, frustrated as hell.